Do you wanna have complete control on the pacing and timing of your video? Well, today I'm gonna to go over the four trimming tools that have been in editing applications as long as I can remember. Ripple, roll, slip, and slide. Here we go. Hey, if you're new here, I'm Chadwick. This is Creative Video Tips, where I help you create videos that make a difference and stand out. If that's something you're into, click subscribe right now so you don't miss our next tip. Video editing is storytelling, and great storytelling involves communication and emotion and feeling and pacing. And all that stuff is directly tied to trimming. And a lot of people don't know, but there are four great tools built into all of the editing applications to trim. And I'm gonna walk you through each one of them and show you why you would use them and how to use them. Let's jump into the computer right now. So the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna jump up in Final Cut Pro. You wanna adjust a preference. Okay, so you go to preferences. In the um, editing tab, you wanna make sure that you have a checkbox on show detailed trimming feedback. And what that does is when you start trimming is it gives you a left and a right. So it's an incoming and outgoing or A and B side of your clip. If you don't have that preference checked in here for a timeline, show detailed trimming feedback, you're not gonna see those. And that's really important because you wanna be able to see both sides of your edit when you're making a change. Now that we have our preferences set up, I'm gonna show you how to do ripple trims. And there's two types of ripple trims that are really important to know. One is we're gonna be using the select tool, so just A. And what this is gonna do, if you hover close to an edit point, you can shorten it or extend it, and that changes the overall length of the entire project. So you can see it's basically sucking up the end of a clip and it makes the whole project shorter and you can do that on both sides so you can clip and click and drag on either side and because we have that preference set we can see up here in the top the incoming and outcoming clips now the next way you could do a a ripple trim here is if you go to the position tool so if you click P this behaves a little different and it's it's more like a default and other editing applications that aren't Final Cut. What this is gonna do, it's gonna maintain the overall duration of the project and insert black filler where you're cutting away from frames. And it's easier just to see this than explain it. So with the P um, selected, the position tool, I'm gonna do the same thing. I click and drag and you can see as I'm doing this, we have inserted black filler into the area. You can do that on both sides, that's going to extend the black filler, but what we haven't done is we haven't changed the length of a project. That could be really important if you have like music timed out on one section and you don't want all of that stuff to get shifted. So you're going to jump between the A and P tools when you're doing ripple trims in Final Cut Pro 10. Alright, let's join these back up real quick. So I still have P selected and we can do that and they'll just click and drag right together. Now the next three trimming tools are really awesome and they don't affect the overall length of a project but they're all about fine tuning and getting things uh, to feel exactly how you want them to feel. Maybe it's something landing on a beat or um, a sound effect matching something. It could, it could really be anything. But the way we access this next one which is called a roll edit in Final Cut Pro, it's also called a dual roller trim. Um, which I think makes more sense once you see it here. So to do that, we're gonna go over to our tools again, and this is, we're gonna choose the trim tool. And to use the trim tool, it now gives me a new option that I didn't get with the arrow or the P tool, is and it gives me this one that has markers that are sort of going left and right of the edit. This is a kind of a magical thing, and what it will do is if you drag one direction, like say I'm dragging to the right here, I'm adding frames to the clip on the left and I'm subtracting the exact same number of frames to the one on the right. So this is a great way to keep your timing of the whole project or you know scene or something the same, but to put a little bit more emphasis or time or length on one clip than the other. So this is a roll or dual roll edit. Uh, one thing I will note about these dual roll edits is that you need to have handles. So that's kind of the, the thing with all of these. You, If you have not sort of pre-selected segments of clips before you cut them into your timeline or trim them, you're, you will eventually come to a limit of a clip. So this one, 
you can see it took me a while to get there. Uh, that's the end of when the record button was pushed. So you can obviously only trim or roll out as far as, you know, was recorded. I can still remember the first time someone explained to me a slip trim and my mind was pretty much blown. I, I don't know if it's going to blow your mind, but I think this is still pretty a remarkable uh, way to fine tune things on your timeline. To do a slip trim, you are going to be in the, uh, the trim mode here or the trim tool. And what a slip trim does is it's basically saying, hey, I still want my edit to be here and I want my edit point to be here but I want the inside guts of it to be different. So I want the inside guts to be from an earlier or later part of this container. So I've got this picture here with my dog, or this, this video clip with the dog, and it, you can see it starts with him, and he's just, or she is just hanging out, and then she heads off screen, right? One thing, um, maybe I wanted her to be a little bit more off screen before we cut to the next clip. The easiest way to do this without changing the timing would be to use the slip tool. So what we do is you just, with trim selected, you hover over anywhere inside the clip area, which is also why I have uh, these, these clips are super huge, by the way. If you want to make them smaller or larger, you can do that over here. Um, I don't have bad eyesight or anything. I just like seeing things big. So, and I have a big 27 inch monitor, so I do it. Anyways, back to slip. If you click on here, uh, and then it's a click and drag. Now you can see we have cool little indicators there in Final Cut Pro, those yellow brackets, and then they're pointing to the inside. So what we're changing is the inside guts, and these little thumbnails that are in there are kind of showing us that, hey, I'm changing where the shot that's inside of there is beginning and ending, but I'm not affecting the shots around it, and I'm not affecting the overall length of the timeline, which can be really helpful. And then if you're looking up above at the viewers, we get to see a great preview of, hey, this is where that last frame is um, when I'm doing the trim. So let's say for instance, I want Roxy, our cute little girl mutt pup to get off screen. I'm gonna be dragging here to the left right now until she's completely off and then releasing the mouse. And now I've effectively made that change so that you know she's she looks she runs off screen and then we cut to another shot now that's you know that's probably not a great match to another clip but you get the idea of how that works so it's just as simple as hitting T um, for trim mode and then clicking and dragging around the guts I think you're gonna probably use this this uh, slip tool the slip trimming method a lot once you get used to um, making those final tweaks at the end and you don't want to mess any other timing up. So the last main trimming method I want to talk about is sliding a clip. Sliding a clip is we're still using the trim uh, tool over here so T for trim and what you're gonna do with a slide is you're gonna basically be doing a roll. Remember roll is adding and subtracting the same number of frames from each side of an edit but we're gonna do a roll on both sides of uh, a clip so it maintains the length of the whole project and um, it basically moves it around within itself and I'll show you what I'm talking about so to do it you just hold option and then you can click when you have the T tool <laughs> selected so I'm moving left here and you can see uh, we are basically moving this clip forward in time but the length of the project is staying the same Pretty nifty, huh? So if I move left, we're basically taking away a frame from the clip that's to the left and adding that to the clip that's on the right. But the clip in the center is staying exactly the same. Another way of performing basically the same thing that I see most people do more often is if it's on a, a you know a timeline that's above or something. So let's say we had this up higher here. We could you know, maybe be joining two cuts and you can move this left and right on here. So that's another way of sort of doing the same sort of deal. The disadvantage to doing an edit this way is really you don't have that sort of precision feedback monitor deal. 
whatever they call it, where you can see the incoming and outcoming shots. So in, in this mode right here, you can see, I can see that what I'm basically taking away on the shot on the left and what's coming in on the shot of the right. I do have to say, Avid has a little heads up on this one because it's going to show you four screens. It's actually going to show you the, the inside of that clip that you're actually moving around in time rather than just the two. But I think seeing these two is, is really all I need most of the time. So that is sliding. The last thing I want to show you, just because we're in Final Cut today, is the uh, Precision Editor. This is a thing that's unique to Final Cut Pro 10. It's one of the things that make it really easy to see what you're doing. And uh, I'll just jump in and show you how to do it or use it. So to access it, if you just use the uh, Select tool, the A tool, double click the transition and this crazy new thing opens up. So what this is, they call it the Precision Editor. And it lets you see what's happening and it lets you make an adjustment with it super blown up in your face. You can see the beginning and end of a clip and see how much uh, handle, which handle is the amount of clip you have that's sort of outside of what you have on your timeline, how much you have of that available left. Um, so by just double clicking that, you can perform all um, you know, uh, uh, ripples and rolls from within there. So the way you would do a roll with just the mouse is you can drag right down here and the parts that are going to be visible are the parts that are brighter. So you'll see this part and this part and then these parts that are dimmed out, you are not going to see in your edit. Uh, if you wanted to like do a ripple trim on it, you would click from up here and you can see where we're actually making the project shorter. And same thing if we clicked over here, we'd be making the project shorter. And you can also jump around between edit points within this mode by just clicking these other dots. So kind of uh, a neat little interface. I don't use a whole lot, but I think it's a really useful learning tool. And then the way you get out of it is you can, you can just you can double click or hit escape. And then you're back to seeing things a lot more simplified. Now you are a trimming master and you can control pretty much anything on the timeline. If you got anything out of this video, please click subscribe. That'll let me know I'm doing a good job and I'll see you in the next video.